Good morning. Today is Sunday, April 7, 2024, and welcome to Pilgrim Baptist Church, Fort Wayne, Indiana. On behalf of our pastor, Raymond C. Dix Jr., and the entire Pilgrim family, we would like to welcome you to our morning worship service. We pray that something would be said or done that would encourage you to come back and worship with us again. We're so glad you're here. the hospital at this time. So please be sure if there is a person or a loved one that is hospitalized to let us know here at the church that we may keep them in our prayers and have our um, responsible ministries to reach out to them. We ask that you continue to pray for the sick and shut in. Um, keep our minister of music, Deborah Fay, in your prayers as she's not with us today for she is under the weather as well. We also ask that you pray for the incarcerated and check on those who haven't been here in a while. Saturday, April 13th, there will be a women's prayer breakfast from 10 a.m. to 1230 here at Pilgrim Baptist Church. Um, it is hosted by the Boys and Gr Girls Club and Minister Joanna Patterson Finch. The guest speaker will be Minister Marie Bush Dupree from Dupree Memorial Temple. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Would you like to wave your hand so everybody knows who we're speaking of? Oh, okay. At the Boys and Girls Club, my, my apologies, from 10 to 1230. Sunday, April 14, 2024, there will be a pastoral installation service at St. John Missionary Baptist Church at 4 p.m. Uh, Minister Marcus and Sister Catherine Lowe will be um, installed there on that day, so please govern yourselves accordingly. You do know that uh, St. John Missionary Baptist Church, those are our brothers and sisters in Christ, so keep them lifted as they go through this transition. Thursday and Friday, April 18th and 19th, 2024, will be the COVID vaccination testing site. We are still having COVID, in case y'all didn't know, still around. So please make sure that you um, take advantage of the opportunity to get your vaccinations here at the church. Okay. Saturday, April 20th. At 2 p.m., um, the Children Youth Ministry is sponsoring an, an outing to the Ruby Bridges performance. It will be at the Fort Wayne Civic Theater. Um, so please, there will be information at the Welcome Center on your way out if you want more information regarding that outing. Um, okay. As you all know, um, unfortunately, um, our mayor has passed away. We talked about this last week and keep uh, Henry family in your prayers. It is also time to get ready for the primary election. Um, although we won't be able to vote on the new mayor right now, there are other seats that are available that we will be able to vote on. So uh, for those of you who are unable to get out on election day, anticipate that um, in May, there will be absentee um, registrations that you can fill out in the vestibule of the Welcome Center. Um, and so this is very important that you um, get your absentee ballot application in on time. That deadline is um, April 25th at 11.59 p.m. This is just for your absentee ballot. These are for folks who can't get out of the house, 
um, who may have to work that day and some of our servicemen and women who may be absent. This information will also be at the information table. The Fort Wayne Great American Cleanup will take place um, May 4th from 8 to noon. Uh, you may volunteer. We need people to help do some things around the church and in our surrounding area here in East Central Neighborhood. Um, so we want to be good stewards and good neighbors as well. So you can sign up um, at the information desk in the vestibule if you're interested um, in participating in the Great American Cleanup. On May 4th, at 6 p.m., save the date, it will be the Pilgrim Baptist Church Missionary Ruth Circle Mother-Daughter Banquet. Donations are $12 for adults, $6 for children, 18 and under. You can see any missionary member for donation tickets. May I please have the missionary ladies to please wave your hand so folks know who to get a ticket from? Okay, look around, you see who those folks are. Awesome, thank you. They do a great job every year. I know I've gone several times. It's a, it's a long-standing tradition here at Pilgrim Baptist to attend that mother-daughter banquet. So let's make sure we support them in that. On May 24th, we will have our Sunday school fish fry. Woo -woo! Uh, from two to six, tickets are available today. Please see the captains listed at the, in the bulletin. The dinner will cost $15. Okay, lastly, I have a thank you card. To my pilgrim family, may kindness return to you in the same beautiful way that it was given. I sincerely thank you for your calls, prayers, and cards, and kind gestures sent my way. You truly are the friendly church, Mrs. Stella Pascal. These are all the announcements that I have. Please check your bulletin and the bulletin board downstairs for further announcements. Thank you so much. Good morning. Let the church say amen. I'd like to welcome each and one of my family members and all the visitors that are joining us today and those that are enjoy joining us virtually. We always want to urge that we're better live than watching us on TV. On behalf of Senior Pastor Dix, I'd like to welcome you to this morning's services. And I'd echo the comment from our announcement. We hope that something or said it is said or done that will encourage you to come and worship with us here at Pilgrim. You know, it's always a blessing for me to, to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, it's very easy when you can tell somebody something that you truly, truly believe. And I truly, truly believe that God is blessing me and blessing you. And it's a blessing in another day's journey and we should all be happy about that. I'm going to turn this over to our music ministry, but I want to leave you with the thought. Let go and let God. Let go and let God. Amen. We ask that you all join us this morning in singing hymn 191.
on, put your hands together. We're glad to be here today. If he woke you up this morning, come on. Glory to his name. saints. Shall we stand for the word? It's coming out of the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verses 23 through 27. It's Proverbs chapter 4 uh, verses 23 through 27. And it reads as follows. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. I read for you Proverbs, fourth chapter, verses 23 through 27. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hears of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Almighty God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Sovereign God of the universe, we come to you humbly in prayer, the humblest way that we've been taught to come. Lord, we thank you. We thank you once again for the privilege to gather in the house of the Lord to sing praises to your name. We're so thankful that you watched us as we slumbered and slept last night and guarded the night hours with your supernatural powers. And when the moment was right, you touched us and gave us a mind to come into your house for praise and worship. And Lord, we still enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are so thankful that on another day's journey, you are above us, beside us, in front of us. And we have learned to lean on you. We have learned to lean not on our own understanding, but on you, Lord. Yes, as we came into your house, sitting in Sunday school, you were with us. You touched us. You ignited our, our wisdom, and we were able to extract a measure of understanding from your word. And we sit here now, still singing praises to your name, and so glad that you are with us. You are with us on another day's journey. Lord, you have the whole world in your hand. You sit high and you look low and you guide us and you show us which way to go and you show us when to stop and know and know that you are God and we thank you for all those privileges we thank you and we thank you especially last but not least for the sacrifice 
that your son made on Calvary for the remission of our sins. And because of that sacrifice, we have a right to the tree of life and we can face tomorrow. These are all blessings for Christ's sake. Amen. Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. Good morning to everybody that's glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're glad to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ today, uh, who was, is, and forevermore will be. Amen. 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 So thankful to God to see each of you. Uh, I'm grateful that you are here today. Uh, I would that you would continue to pray. We have a few of our members that have uh, come down with a little bit of a, of a virus. Uh, uh, so just be mindful of that. Let's be careful and diligent as we look at our health. Amen. So that we can uh, make sure we take care of what we need to take care of. Amen. I want to thank everybody who prayed for me on last week. Amen. We came through that, uh, that little challenge uh, with our health on last week, and I'm thankful to you for your prayers and, as always, uh, your support. Amen. Amen. So we're grateful for what God is doing. There's a couple things that I want to drop in your spirit today. Um, on next Sunday, uh, we will be the uh, guests or, or be with uh, St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Now, I'm not preaching the installation service of Pastor Lowe, but St. John is a sister church to us. Amen? Amen. And we have had several things like VBS and things like that that we've done in partnership with St. John. They are installing their new pastor uh, who will be uh, assuming the official role of pastor on next Sunday. I do have a part in the service, uh, so I would ask that all of Pilgrim that can and will meet us over there for that service. It's going to be very, very, uh, very much a blessed time, and we're looking forward to celebrating with the St. John family. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we will be back in our in-person uh Bible study this week, our in-person Bible study this week, and uh, we will be working with lesson number two. So everybody know lesson two, originally it was be three, but we will be working with lesson number two on this week. So be mindful of that for our in-person Bible study, April the 10th from 12 or at 12 noon and at 6 p.m. So two opportunities for you to be a part of that. If you have not been a part of this new class uh, that we're working on, so please be, please be aware that you can still uh, join that class. You can still be a part of that class. We're going to be talking about spiritual disciplines. And it real, really will flow with the sermon series for this month. So uh, it'll really help you if you're a part of that class as well to connect to uh, the preaching for this month. So let's be mindful of that. Amen. All right. Um, birthdays today. Amen. First, we've got April the 7th, which is today, Sister Ruby Stewart. Amen. Give the Lord praise for her. Amen. Amen. Sister Joanne Gaines on April the 9th. Give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. April 13th, Jovan Scruggs' birthday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you have, if we miss your birthday for this week, uh, please let us know. And it likely means, as I always say, that yeah, that brother school, they are likely say that we uh, that we will uh, uh, don't have your information in our system. So we want to make sure that your information is in our system. Now we also have one correction uh, for us to be considered um, the Sunday school fish fry was scheduled for May the 24th. And I got called from our Sunday school superintendent this morning. That date has been changed to May 11th, May 11th. 
Amen. Amen. So May 11th, that is the Saturday before Mother's Day, I believe. Amen. So if you're blessed to have your mom still with you or if you're a mom yourself, come on by Saturday and get you a plate of fish. <laughs> Amen. And uh, help support our Sunday school efforts in uh, traveling to our National Baptist Convention in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, let me put a little bit of emphasis on that because there are times when people, you know, sometimes have questions about why do we participate in our convention? There are a couple, couple of things. First of all, nationally, uh, we participate in the convention because it helps us to learn best practices from churches from all over the country. If you, if you understand what it is to be a Christian, we're not isolated in a place just by ourselves, amen? God calls us into community. So pilgrim is an expression of that community. And so we have a community of believers who are here at Pilgrim. But Pilgrim is just one expression of a worldwide community that is called the body of Christ. And there are times when we need to get together with other members of the body of Christ. How would you feel and how would you think you would perform if your arm simply said, well, I'm going to do things by myself and I'm not going anywhere with the rest of the body? It's not going to work, is it? And so we participate in our convention as Baptists. And here's another reason. Being a Baptist or coming to a Baptist church or being a part of a Baptist church, let me tell you, it's not just about the polity that we have. That, that is the, the church governance. It's not just about that. Matter of fact, that's a smaller part, part of what that means. Being a Baptist is about the doctrinal beliefs that we have that the Bible teaches and that we hold to be true, amen? And so participating in our conventions helps strengthen our understanding of the truth that we believe from the Bible, amen? I'm not speaking against other denominations, I'm speaking for our denomination, amen? Amen, amen. let's understand that. I heard one preacher say this, he said, I, I was a uh, Baptist born, uh, Baptist bred, and when I die, I'm going to be Baptist dead. <laughs> Amen. Now, that's commitment, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, so, I mean, just to understand why we participate. Now, we participate on the national level, we participate on the state level, and we participate on the um, local level. And if we understand those things, we are able to know that we are part of something bigger than ourselves. Amen? Amen. So what does that require? It requires our support, obviously, uh, to these particular things. Uh, uh, our national convention has uh, uh, navigated some very difficult waters during the COVID season uh, and coming out of COVID. Uh, our state convention, same. Our district, the same. Uh, so we're just asking people to be able to say, let's understand the great fellowship that we have. So when we send delegates from our church to these conventions, the, the, we're not just sending folks on vacation. Don't think that. Amen. If you, if you have never been to the convention and you think folks are going on vacation, you ought to come this year and bring your walking shoes. <laughs> Amen. Because there's a lot of walking, moving around, studying. Be ready for that. Now, I'm um, set all that and I'm be done with this when I say this. We're going to Memphis. Now, I don't know how many of you have been to Memphis in your lifetime, maybe a few of you. How many people have been to Memphis before? Raise your hand. Oh, praise the Lord. The, the National Civil Rights Museum is in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, the Lorraine Motel, where Dr. King was killed, is in Memphis, Tennessee. How many of y'all like the blues? <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with the blues. The blues ain't nothing but a good man feeling bad. That's all. <laughs> so, so well, well, you know, y'all know Bill Street and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm, I'm going to be there and you come down there. Now, don't let me have you. I'm going to do a check about 12 midnight. You need to be home by then. That's your curfew. <laughs> Amen. But we, but we want you to go. We want you to enjoy Memphis and what it has to offer. But most of all, the most important thing is learn learn and grow as a Christian. Amen. 
Um, anybody here? Uh, oh, there she is. Uh, Sister, Sister Brooks, Russell, Brooks Russell, let me tell you, your garden is beautiful. I've seen it with my own eyes, your garden. You put a lot of work in that garden, don't you? What do you do with a plant that don't grow? Y'all see what I'm saying? If you plant a tomato plant in your garden and come back in a few weeks and ain't no tomatoes, y'all ain't hearing me. Jesus came by a fig tree and looked under the leaf. Do I have a witness here? And there were no figs. If you've been planted in God's garden, you are expected to produce fruit. All right, I'm done with that. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Amen. So keep those things in mind as we go forward. Let's get ready today to give as the Lord has blessed us uh, as we sow seeds into the kingdom. Let me also take this time to thank everybody who worked so hard on last week to make sure that all of our guests and people that came to share with us uh, had a wonderful experience here at Pilgrim uh, during the Easter and Resurrection celebration. Give God praise for that. Now, you heard our announcer also announce uh, that in the passing of our mayor, there's going to be a precinct election to select the next mayor. What I want to do is I'm calling Pilgrim into a period of prayer, a period of prayer. We should be praying for who God selects to put in place in that office. Amen. Now, we can all have our preferences and I have mine. Amen. But we should be praying for whoever God puts in place in that office. The Bible says that God sets all leaders in place. And for whatever reason, he sets some leaders in place. Sometimes we don't understand. But yet, I'm going to tell you, I keep telling you on 2016, boy, we prayed, didn't we? We started praying like we had never prayed before when we saw the election and won the president, didn't we? And now... We must pray even more and diligently pray and remember that God sets these things in order. So I'm calling us as a church family into this period of prayer for the process that there be no shenanigans. Amen. Y'all, look, I'm telling y'all, politics is made up of people. And sometimes people like shenanigans, don't they? <laughs> and so we have to pray, pray that God's will will, will, uh, be done in this situation. Thank you so much for that. All right, let's get ready to give today as the Lord has so blessed us. Uh, on my far left and my far right, if you would stand and follow the directions of our of our ushers. I believe that's Sister Barnett back there. Is that who? Is it? Did I see Sister Barnett? Hey, darling. Come on, y'all give the Lord some praise. We have seen her in a while. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, bring your gifts to the Lord. Our two middle sections, please stand.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. The word of God says, to allow the children to come to Christ. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. And we want to come today not only to ask God's blessings over and express our thankfulness for the gifts that have been received, but we also want to ask God to continue to bless these wonderful children who stand before us today. They need our prayer and our encouragement at all times. And so I want us to remember these children today in our prayers and our staff that work so diligently each Sunday to help teach them and to train them in the way of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray together. God in heaven, I'm grateful today to be here to lift up your holy and righteous name. We come before your presence, Father, not just individually, but collectively as a body. Lord, knowing that if it had not been for you, we would not be here on today. Thank you for the opportunity to worship. Thank you for the opportunity to come before your presence. And Lord, thank you for these gifts that have been received for all who have given, whether online or in person, God, we thank you for these gifts, Lord. We thank you for the precious gift of life. And Father, how that gift of life is renewed in the lives of our children. And God, we thank you for them today. We pray, Lord, for them as they get ready to go and to study and to learn that, oh God, you would grant their, their teachers, Lord, wisdom to share with them. And not only that, Father, that God, you would allow them to receive what it is you have for them on today. God, we just give you praise and glory because we know you love us all as your children. And Father, you said, except we become like a little child, we cannot even see the kingdom of heaven. And so, Lord, give us the humility that we need to become as little children, Father, so that we can glorify you in all things. Thank you for this great example of these children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God praise for our children. Amen. Come on and clap your hands with me. 
your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on, bless, bless the Lord in this place. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Fantastic Four and, and the band. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. For blessing our hearts on today. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me for the reading of the word? Just one verse today. Just one verse today. Uh, we are starting a new series uh, on uh, today, and it is our series for the month of April. And it's a very important series, especially if you know anyone that has been wounded 
And I'm talking about whether it was a bad breakup, a divorce, or just somebody who's got a wounded heart. You need to bring him to church this month. Amen. If you're here and that's been your situation, you need to make sure you stay in tune with this series. It's going to bless your life. Amen. Amen. And so I want you to, to be aware of that. Uh, uh, all of us go through those things at different phases of life, but we certainly want to, to, to keep that in mind to how to bless and help others who are going through these situations. So Proverbs chapter four and verse 23, this will be our theme verse for the month. Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. It says this in the English standard version, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the spring, flow the springs of life. And today in this series, the first message of this series is entitled, Why You Should Guard Your Heart. So the series is Guard Your Heart Today, Why You Should Guard Your Heart. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, over the next few weeks, as I said, we shall walk through a series of messages regarding our heart. Amen. We will not discuss much of that physical organ that beats in your chest, but more of the heart as the center of life, our mind, body, and soul. In this regard... Much has been said about the heart as the center of spirituality. The Bible speaks often of the heart. In the book of Proverbs alone, the heart is mentioned some 97 times. And we shall get to what the scripture says about the heart in the coming messages. But let us begin by looking at what people over the years have said about the heart. So I want to share a few quotes with you today about the heart. Helen Keller once said this, the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Thought that was dynamic, wouldn't it? Amen. Nelson Mandela and everybody knows who Nelson Mandela is, amen? Nelson Mandela had this to say. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. Another powerful quote, amen? Augustine, who uh, is the early church African theologian, prayed this prayer concerning his own heart. He said this to the Lord, O Holy Spirit, descend plentifully into my heart. Enlighten the dark corners of this neglected dwelling and scatter there thy cheerful beams. What a beautiful word, amen? Beautiful word, right? And what he was really praying, he was saying, God, if left to my own devices, most likely I will neglect my own heart. So I need you, Holy Spirit, to inhabit my heart because when you come, the darkness in my heart must flee. Do I have a witness there? Amen, amen. Now I could go on and on with quotes about the heart as the center of our lives, but I want to shift this morning to the painful reality of dealing with our own heart, the center and the seat of our emotions. How many of us, and you don't have to raise your hand, have experienced a wounded or broken heart? Somebody said they were going to love you and then did something that showed that they did not love you. Amen? Somebody that you gave your love to rejected you and your heart was broken. Even in the house of God, saints, 
There are people who have wounded our hearts. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I know, I know y'all, y'all act like that ain't never happened in church. But there are people that have wounded us. And one of the reasons why our sanctuaries are struggling to keep people involved and active is because we're the only army in the world that shoots its own wounded. And so if this is for you today, if you're watching online, this is for you today. If you've been wounded and the most you could do recently is get up and turn on your computer or your television and watch service online because you can't seem to bring yourself to come into the sanctuary because every time you step foot in a church, you are reminded of the painful experiences that you've had. Now, let's not be too hard on folks like that because there's some places some of us can't go. Because if we drive down that street, do I have a witness here? You are reminded of some painful experience in your life. The enemy wants you to always think about what was what has happened to you in the past so that you can forget about who is in your corner. Amen. So that there's many of us, you know, sometimes it's too many times our hearts been wounded, too many times for us to even remember. Now, usually we always remember the first time somebody broke our heart. Amen. Fifth grade. Brother Julie, I wrote a little letter to a girl. Said on that letter, do you like me? Yes or no? Check the one that applies. <laughs> and she got the letter and she laughed. You know I was in trouble right then, bro. Tell your brother something right now. If they laugh at that point, you're in trouble. She laughed and she checked no. And my little 10-year-old heart was as broken as I thought it could ever be. But guess what? When I kept on living, I found out that that was nothing compared to what can happen to you in life. So we got a lot of times. And, they, and, and sometimes it, you know, we recognize that there's very little pain that comes like the pain of someone hurting or piercing our heart. And this pain can and often does paralyze us. You've seen the movies. Somebody with a broken heart just lays in the bed, doesn't do anything, doesn't want to go anywhere, doesn't have an appetite. Come on here if I'm talking to you. <laughs> huh? Doesn't, doesn't want to talk to anybody. And, and, you know, phone ring, they won't answer. Because brokenheartedness can and often does send you to a state of sustained paralysis. You can't move. Emotionally, you become frozen. Watch this now. There are people right now in this room who have been in a state of emotional stagnation because somebody years ago broke your heart. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. There are people right now whose relationships struggle because you haven't got over the person that broke your heart and you done started another relationship with somebody else and you taking it out on them. I wish I had a witness here. Now you didn't tell that new person that you still had baggage, amen, from your past because you didn't know how to navigate a broken heart. So this, this month, we're going to talk about how to guard your heart, how to navigate these circumstances, and how to get out of that 
paralysis that happens when somebody wounds your heart. And let me tell you something. Let's be clear, my brothers and sisters, as a, as a sunny spring day. Let's be clear. It doesn't always happen in romantic relationships. There's some family members that can break your heart. Y'all ain't praying today. Isn't that right? Amen. There's some co-workers that can break your heart. And here's a good one. Parents, we got some children that can break our heart. And children, understand this. Ain't nobody going to advocate for you and love you more than your parents do. So the next time the devil tempts you to say, your mama don't love you, or your daddy don't love you, you rebuke that devil right then and right there, amen, and say, wait a minute, I may not be getting my way, but I know my mama loved me. If you got any doubt, look up. If there's a roof over your head, <laughs> huh? Go to the refrigerator. If it's doing more than just keeping air cold, <laughs> you know that there's love for you. You go eat, your mom and daddy don't present you with a grocery bill, you're doing pretty good. Better than about 80% of the people in the world, amen? So I want you to understand that we got to get out of this paralysis. And so for many of us, the reason this is true, because we as believers tend to carry, or as some say, wear our hearts on our sleeves. You ever heard that before? Oh, you can't say nothing to, to them. They wear their heart on their sleeve. Now, that's usually something we say when we want to hurt somebody's feelings and then we feel bad because they feel bad. Are you just wearing your heart on your sleeve? Well, let's understand that. So, my brothers and sisters, I, I, I know that I'm a person because there's some transparency and some 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 openness that I need to have with you today because I don't want you to leave here today all closed up and didn't get nothing because you was afraid to admit that this is your situation. I know that I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm a big crybaby. I am. I, I was watching the play last week and, and, and I saw it was a play about the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I knew that on the stage, y'all, that wasn't Jesus. But on that stage, the man that was playing Jesus was beaten. It was so realistic. I don't know how they did it, but they had what looked like blood coming off his back. And I sat there and I thought about what my savior had done for me and all I could do is weep. And so I know I wear my heart on my sleeves and let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, the greatest wounds on my life have come from people I have helped or those who are nearest to me. I don't get a lot of arrows from people I don't know. Amen. You know who's shooting at me? Some of the ones I know well. Y'all ain't trying to hear this. I know it. See, I, I want you to understand that so that you don't, you aren't surprised when someone close to you wounds you. How do you think Jesus felt? Twelve. And one Judas Iscariot close to Jesus, walked with him, talked with him, saw him perform all of these miracles, and he was the one that betrayed him. And so my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that, you know, my heart has been and still is exposed to others. And you know why my heart is exposed? I'm going to tell you why my heart is exposed. Because I choose to love. Now there are some of you in this room today. And you might not want to say it. 
but you've made an unconscious or sometimes a conscience choice that you're not going to love no more. That way you won't be hurt. Let me tell you something. That's not true. If you don't love, you can still be hurt. But some of us have made the choice not to love anymore because when you love, you are vulnerable. When you love, you, 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 can, you are exposed. Your heart is exposed. And God is the perfect example of what that exposure looks like. For God so loved the world, his choice was to love us, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But God chose to love. Now, we can't hardly get by with one person hurting us. Imagine a world full of people that were wounding your heart every day. You see the evil in the world and how susceptible humanity is to evil. You see all of that. How, can you imagine what God's heart has to go through when we lie? Imagine what God's heart has to go through. When we backstab one another, imagine what God's heart has to go through. When we talk bad about each other as God's children, imagine what his heart has to go through. My, my two sons, my oldest two sons, got into a tussle one day. And they were kind of little kids. It was over a toy or something like that. You know what kids argue over all the time. You know, one of them playing with it, the other one don't think they should be. It could be a thousand toys sitting around, but they want that one. <laughs> Amen. And as a parent, my heart experienced something it had not experienced before. My heart was broken because my children were fighting. Imagine how God's heart must feel when his children fight with one another. And so I want to help you understand this. Now, there are many of us, my brothers and sisters, as I said, with an exposed heart who have in the past had a heart that we carried for all to see. Some of us have given up and we've locked our heart away in a large steel vault protected by electrified fence, barbed wire, and armed guards. You're not going to get close to my heart, right? And where love should be, Bitterness has replaced love. You won't even allow somebody to love you. Because as soon as they get close to loving you, you find some way to push them away. Do I have a witness here? I know this is uncomfortable to hear. But we got to deal with this issue of our hearts as believers. And we're going to see that this month. Let me give you an illustration of what I'm talking about that I heard just this morning. Let me tell you something. I, I pray with a group of pastors every morning. And, and we pray every morning uh, about what God has put on our hearts to preach and those kind of things. And it's about eight or nine of us on the call. And we pray every morning. And we take turns praying. And, and one of the brothers today, and I thank God for him, Dr. Damien Epps, one of the brothers today said that, hey, I got to share with y'all something that my childhood friend literally had gone through a sickness and a disease of his heart, his physical heart, was so diseased that he had to carry around a machine that kept his heart and kept him alive. This man had no pulse, nor could they detect a heartbeat because basically what had happened was his heart was dormant in his chest. The machine he carried was his heart. Literally, this man had his own heart in his hand. Think about that for a moment. 
How exposed? And I don't care how he dressed it up. He put it in a coach bag, the machine. But that machine was still keeping him alive because it was doing the work of his heart. And my brothers and sisters, I hope that makes this situation clearer, that many of us are like that person. We carry our heart in our hands. Our heart is exposed to others. Others get wounded or see our wounds because our heart is visible. And, and I think I, I, I want you to really get that today because my brothers and sisters, if you're here and you're one of those persons that carries your heart in your hand, your heart is exposed. And so what we want to teach you this month is how to guard that exposed heart. Amen? Now, it is nearly impossible to love one's neighbor as ourselves without exposing your heart. It is nearly impossible to love another sacrificially without exposing our heart. It is impossible to do the work of ministry from a place of truth, integrity, and Christ-likeness without exposing our heart. So many just give up on love. Give up on placing others before ourselves. Or simply give up on ministry and life. Ask the Lord, where do bench members come from? Sometimes we think that, they, that people who don't do anything in, in the church you know, come from the fact that there's, not been, there's been lack of training. Sometimes that's true, yes. But let's be careful. Sometimes people sit in the sanctuary because their hearts have been so wounded that it seemed like the best thing they could do that day was just to come in the house of God and take a seat. And we're not dealing with their pain. We deal with their presence. And we deal with their money. But we don't deal with their pain. And I came to tell you today that it's time for the church to stop turning our backs on people who have heart pain. So here it is. This is why I believe the Bible as the word of God teaches us that the heart is necessary but it must be guarded because it is also as vulnerable as it is necessary. When you go out your way to help others, your heart is exposed. It's vulnerable. You're vulnerable to being wounded. You're out there. You've placed yourself in a vulnerable position. So you got to protect your heart. Now, you need your heart. But you also need it to be healthy. Amen? My father is a heart patient. And the doctor diagnosed him with congestive heart failure. And I watched my father go from kind of the strongest dude I know. And dad, if you're watching, I love you. I, I watched my father go from the strongest dude I know to as his heart began to give him trouble, he wasn't able to move like he used to. Are you hearing me today? Just as your physical heart is required to give stamina to your physical body, so your spiritual heart is required to give stamina to your spiritual life. I said something there that's, and I'll catch up with you when you get home. One reason why you don't have the energy for ministry, it's not your age. Look at somebody say, it ain't your age. It's not how much medication you take. You know what the reason is? Your spiritual heart is not healthy. I have seen people almost 100 years old with all kinds of issues come into the church and sign up to work in God's kingdom. Are y'all hearing me today? Where does that stamina come from? 
Because if you look at them, they're on a cane or a walker. Steps might be a little slow. But they say, I want to work for Jesus. So it's, listen, it's not, your heart has to be healthy. Your spiritual heart has to be healthy to give you the stamina that you need to fight off the devil and the things of evil in this world. Amen? See, an unhealthy heart doesn't keep good rhythm in the body. My father, bless his heart, amen, has a pacemaker in his heart. But now he doesn't have a pacemaker on that side. On that side, he has something called an optimizer. An optimizer delivers five hours of therapy to his heart every day of his life. The pacemaker is there just in case, Brother Lafley, something goes wrong. To keep the rhythm. Because your heart needs to beat in rhythm. It's got to have a rhythm. Your spiritual heart needs a rhythm as well. You've got to keep the rhythm that is necessary to provide stamina throughout your body. And this month, we're going to show you how to do that. Amen? So let's look at our text, Proverbs 4 and 23. What we see is a conversation here happening between a father, Solomon, and his son or sons. Solomon is imparting, imparting valuable life lessons that speak to the necessity for wisdom in life's journey. Our society, and specifically our children today, do not lack information. We are living in the midst of the most information available to people in the history of the world. You got a cell phone? Google. Somebody said. You don't know something? Google. 30 years ago, we'd have looked at somebody, they said the word Google like they was crazy. What you talking, gibberish? <laughs> Now Google is a part of our vernacular. It's a part of our speech. It's a word that as soon as you say it, everybody knows what you're talking about. Google. Whatever you want to know. The other day I looked up a recipe to make beans. On Google. <laughs> you trying to get somewhere? Put the address in. Google will not only tell you how to get there, but they'll show you a picture in real time of where you're going. And then they have the nerve to check the traffic patterns for you. You're experiencing heavy traffic right now. There's a 19-minute delay. Google. So this, this generation does not lack information. But what they lack and what often we lack is wisdom. Do I have a witness here? My sons can get information almost anywhere. But as a father, it's important for them to get wisdom from me. My grandson, amen, come on, give God, that's right, give God praise. You got to impart wisdom. And that's what Solomon is doing. I put in the regimen of my son's life. You must read Proverbs. My grandson, I've already, he just learned how to read. I've already told him, you got to start reading Proverbs. He's like, Papa, what's Proverbs? <laughs> you going to learn. <laughs> Why? Because they don't lack information. They lack wisdom. And so Solomon is giving wisdom to his son. Now, there are three things that jump out and we threw. These are three quick things. We still going to get out of here on time today. The first thing is this. First thing that jumps out is that you got to watch your own heart. Watch your own heart. In your Bibles, when you see that word keep, that word keep means to watch or guard. It comes from the Hebrew word meaning to watch over or pay attention. So you've got to pay attention to your own heart. 
let me help you understand something. Just because somebody wants your heart don't mean they should get it. Somebody getting set free in here right now. Just because somebody wants your heart doesn't mean they should get it. You have to look over, watch over your heart. Your heart needs guidance. But let me tell you something. You ever seen your feelings just run amok? <laughs> huh? You ever had days where you, where you cried and you didn't know why you was crying? You had days where you were so joyous and everything and it wasn't nothing in particular. You just, your heart was just overflowing with joy. So your feelings will do their own thing. You need to be able to watch over your heart. Man. So Solomon says, in order to navigate life successfully, don't ignore your heart. You must do what is necessary to make sure that your spiritual heart is healthy. Now, second thing that jumps out, I told you it's going to be short. Second thing that jumps out as in this text is be vigilant in protecting your heart. Now, vigilance in this text means that we should place our heart in a place that is designed for its protection. Right? When someone commits a crime, generally speaking, they have a place for people that commit crime. What's it called? Jail. County jail. But then if it's serious, where they go? To prison. I remember one time, since Kim Dixon, I was, I was visiting somebody in prison. And I went there just as free as I could be in my mind and everything else. Went through the first door, clank behind me. All right. Went through the second door, clank behind me. By the time I got that third or fourth door to get back to the visiting room, I was nervous. <laughs> Am I going to get out of here? <laughs> and so what I'm saying is that's a place for people who have committed crimes. Your heart needs a place designed for its own protection. Now, I'm going to set somebody free here because you know what you did? You gave your heart to a person. You did. Sometimes we even put in the wedding vows. I give you my whole heart. You can have my heart. Oh, what will I do without you? Take my heart. Do with it what you will. I understand that. But let me tell you something. It's a dangerous thing to give your heart to an individual that you think is honey baby sweetheart. But you find out that they got horns. <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> Amen. There's something in them that's not quite right because as human beings, there's something in all of us called that sin nature. And we've given our heart to people. Now, it's okay to say, metaphorically speaking, I'm giving you my heart. But don't give your heart to a person and you have not given your heart to God. Why did that's the source of heartbreak? Because you, you counted on that person. To keep your heart. Human beings are not the place that it's made for the protection of a heart. Where does a heart go to be protected? The hands of God. Put your heart in God's hands. He will protect your heart. He says, once you in my hands, the devil in hell can't take you out. So you got to be vigilant. Your heart is best protected in the confines of God's hands. Too many of us have given our hearts to human beings alone. The last thing, and we're done. The last thing here is, not only 
must you watch over your heart no more. Not only must you be vigilant in protecting your heart, but the last thing is protect your heart because life depends on it. Now, when you see the word life in this text, it is not just talking about the presence of of a beating heart in your chest, a pulse, and all that kind of stuff, and your mind is working, and all. it's not just talking about that. Whenever you, God talks about life, he talks about the fulfillment of everything that he intends for you to have. That's life to God. What did Jesus say? I come that they might have life, and life what? Come on, Bible reads life what? More abundantly. And so when God talks about life, what he's talking about is you enjoying everything that he has for you. And sometimes there's some mountains and sometimes there's some valleys. Sometimes there's some good. Sometimes there's some bad. But God says that if you're going to have life, you got to protect your heart. Because life is not fair. How many times have you said, but that's not fair? I'm not telling you you're wrong. You're probably right. It might not be fair. But life isn't fair. But God is fair. God is just. God is righteous. And if you protect your heart, you will be able to navigate the difficulties of life. If your life or your heart is in the hand of God, you can navigate the difficulties of life. You ever been stuck in the valley? <laughs> you ever seen the rough side of the mountain? Day after day after day, and you look at God, what is this? Why? So, so much so that your heart begins to wonder where are you, Lord, in the midst of this? Now, I'm a little reticent to ask that question of God because most of the time God's answer is, um, I'm where I've always been. <laughs> the reason you're struggling is because you did your plan and not mine. <laughs> Amen. So just, just remember that next time you ask that question. God, why is this not working out? <laughs> it's because it's your plan. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it takes the Lord to bring things to pass. And so understand that when you talk about your heart, you must guard your heart because this text tells us for from it flow the springs of life. Look at the metaphor there. The springs of life. What image does that give you? Standing by a spring or a little small flowing brook or something like that. Birds in the air, sun shining. The springs of life flow from your heart. And so, my brothers and sisters, wherever your heart is and whatever condition it is in today, it is having an effect on your life. If you are a hateful and mean person, you've invited nothing rather than the rivers of life flowing and all that stuff. You got sludge running. I'm helping somebody here. If you can't, if you can't speak to people when you see them on the street or in the church or something like that, check your heart. If you're a person that always got to have your way or you're going to fall out with everybody around you, check your heart. Because there's nothing that is like Christ in that kind of heart. And so out of your heart flow the issues, as the King James said, of your life. The springs of life. Come from your heart. So wherever your heart, whatever condition your heart is, this month, I want you to take a long look at your own heart. It's easy to look at somebody else's heart. You know, we, we say stuff like, they don't like me. Right? You're trying to judge someone else's heart. Look at your heart. Are you a likable person? Are you one of them people that's hard to like? 
You know, some folks don't have the courage to like you. That's going to catch up with you when you get home. For some of us, it takes a lot of courage to try to like us because our heart is in the right place. So I suggest to you today that you think about what condition your heart is in. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. Maybe you've never heard a word that challenged you to check your own heart. This month, we're going to learn how to guard our heart. And if you guard your heart by putting your heart in the hands of God, you will watch your life transform. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're not going to have struggles because you are. Because of the presence of evil and sin in the world. But I am going to tell you this, that you will have a new attitude about navigating your problems. And instead of your problems bringing you calamity and heartbreak, your problems will bring you praise. I said something there, y'all. Have you ever started praising God when you have a problem? That don't even sound like it should go together. But let me tell you something. Try it. The next time the devil acts a fool in your life, start praising God. No matter what the doctor's diagnosis is, start praising God. Whatever you're going through, start praising. And God says, okay, I see what you're doing. Your heart is in the right place in my hands. You trust in me. And because you trusted me, we're going to navigate this together. And I don't care who you walk with. There's nobody better for you to walk with than to walk with the Lord. Amen. Come on, give God praise in this place. Stand on your feet all over the room. Stand on your feet all over the room. Oh, if you got a grateful heart today. I want to invite you today, wherever you are in this room, and also if you're watching online, that if you need to give your heart to Jesus today, I want to invite you to do so because he is willing, able, and ready to take you just as you are. It doesn't matter if you've been a Christian before. Maybe this is the day that you say, Lord, I, I need to really give you my heart. I've been trying to protect it myself and I've been unsuccessful. But I need you, Lord, to protect my heart today. If that speaks to your heart, our deacons will be happy to pray with you. If you come down here, our deacons will be happy to pray with you today and ask the Father, to protect your heart. So if you're here today and that speaks to you, if you're online, send us an email or whatever the case may be. If you're here and you don't want to necessarily come down on your bulletin, there's a QR code that tells you how to connect with Pilgrim. If you do that today, take out your cell phone and just put the camera over the QR code. It'll take you to a, a link to a page that'll help you. But out of your heart comes the issues of life. And so let's, let's sing a little bit about how grateful we are today. sing it today if you're grateful yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won I could go on and on and on about your word I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to 
grateful people in the house today any grateful people in the house today For the things that you have done. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm grateful for the cross. I'm grateful for the shed blood. I'm grateful for the pierced hands. I'm grateful for the pierced feet. I'm grateful for the pierced side. I'm grateful for the crown of thorns. I'm grateful that he got up with all power in his hand. I'm grateful. Just to praise you, Oh, come on, everybody, sing it now. Going from my heart. My heart oh, yeah. is gratefulness. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Is gratefulness. Yes, grateful, grateful. Yes. take 30 seconds if you're grateful today just take 30 seconds and just lift your hands to the Lord as the music plays and have the Lord lead you today to express your gratitude I want you to express your gratitude today and ask the Lord for help in guarding your heart maybe you've been wounded you've been victimized you've been put to the wayside but let me tell you what God specializes in. He specializes in taking people off the scrap heap of life and returning them to where they should be. And so today, Lord, we, we are grateful for you guarding our hearts in all things, giving you praise. Yes, yes. Is oh, we're grateful, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at how God moves. Hallelujah. I feel his presence in this place today. Hallelujah. We're grateful. Guard our hearts, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to thank everyone for worshiping with us today. 
Hallelujah. This is your first time here, Pilgrim. We thank God for you being a part of our worship experience. We pray that something has been said that blesses your life today. That you will remember this week, all this week and going forward, to join with a willing Holy Spirit that wants to guard your heart. To help you navigate life and so that real life, true life, can come flowing out of you. You'll be able to speak life. You'll be able to live the way God would have you to live. And so my brothers and sisters, that upon the strength of God's word, we say now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To only God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let the children of God say together, Amen. God bless you and go in peace. Praise the Lord, everybody.